بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال سبحانه وتعالى شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وقال سبحانه وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ابن خزع ابن خزيم رحمه الله تعالى نريدس ان الصحيح ان اثرتي وز سلمان الفارسي رضي الله تعالى عن that on the last day of Sha'ban, or a few days before Sha'ban, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke to us and said, so literally we are at that very pinnacle moment, meaning either we fast tomorrow or either we fast on Sunday. So meaning this is the last parts of Sha'ban. So the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, that, O oh people, there comes to you a great month now, a most blessed month, in which is a night greater in value and goodness than a thousand months, meaning Laylatul Qadr. It is a month in which Allah Azza wa Jal has made fasting farad by day, meaning in this month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal has made fasting farad upon the muslims and one thing to remember here in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam relates that if you missed one fast of the month of ramadan and you tried to make up for it in qada which you had to do but you tried to make up for it by fasting the entire year so for this one fast of Ramadan, you compensated and you said, you know what, I missed this fast, hence I'm going to fast the whole year. You will not be able to receive the reward of that one day of Ramadan. It is like that person that is praying in front of the Ka'batullah. And he prays his Zuhr Salah. And somebody else says, I can't pray by the Ka'batullah. So what I will do is I will pray so many Zuhr Salah. But the reward and the barakat of Ka'batullah can never be achieved somewhere else. Because that's a blessing of its own. It's a bit like, as we say, when somebody has the utmost respect for their mother and father, if it may so be that they respect all the elders, but they don't respect their mother and father, they do not do what the mother and father says. The barakat and the blessings of respecting the mother and father cannot be achieved by respecting other elders. Yes, we respect other elders, but also we are being told to respect our parents. In the very same manner, farad, it is Ramadan fast is farad for us. And subhanAllah, why are we saying this? It's because, and I've been saying it time and time again this year, we have found a relative notion within the last few years where we as Muslims, which was unconceivable, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, this would not have even been comprehended by the mind. That Ramadan comes and we don't fast. 10, 15 years, 20 years ago, this was never there. People used to struggle but still fast. People used to have less affluent ability meaning less finance ability but they still used to fast less job opportunity but they still used to fast 
all of these hardships to the extent that people had to pay for families outside from wherever they came from, where they migrated from. Even though all of these hardships, but they still used to fast. Because it was inconceivable not to fast. We have come to an age where it's become fashionable not to fast. Even if somebody has, and it's vital to remember, if Allah has given you ability to fast, then for you is fard to fast. And what is conceived, what is the notion of given ability? If somebody has a, a sickness and the doctor says that for you to fast, it will make it worse. Or you can take you to a, a place where you don't want to be. And I always add on to here, you should look for a doctor that's a Muslim first, if you can. Because he will understand the ramifications of you fasting, he will know how important it is for you. If you can't, then allow and tell your doctor, this is how important fasting is for me. Now when you give a judgment to me for fasting, you will understand where I am coming from also. So number one, the Prophet is dating to us that Allah has made fasting for the by day. And then the Prophet relates, Allah had then made the Taravi prayer, an additional prayer for you by night. And here, Taravi prayer, this is a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. And our teacher Mufti Shabir Sahib used to relate, it has come, it's gone to that extent now that Tarawi prayer is like a shi'ar, it's like a symbol. If you go to a, and I said this a few days ago, if you go to a place, you're not sure if there's any Muslims, but you hear the azan, you know that there's Muslims in this place. If you see a masjid, you know that there's Muslims in this place. In the very same manner, when you know Tarawi prayer is happening, you will know that there is Muslims in this place also. And in this, this is why, Tarawi prayer is our connection to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's the Quran. What has been recited? The kalam of Allah has been recited. And hence this is why it is so important that we make it upon ourselves that every night if Allah gives me ability, then I need to perform the Tarawi prayer in the masjid so that my connection with Allah is improved. How can it be so that we say we want to love Allah? But our love for Allah is that we miss the words of Allah. Have you ever seen somebody claim that I love somebody? But at the very same time not listen to anything they say. Or oh, I love this person. But they've sent me a text in today's day and age. Or they've sent me an email. And I'm going to disregard it. I'm never going to look at it. That is what we are doing. This is the kalam of Allah. Yes. Even so though, it may be so, we don't understand it. But the words also have a cure for the heart. Allah relates that we have made this Qur'an a cure for the people. And part of this, Alama Sayyuti Rahmatullah relates, it is a cure for a person that is in darkness, without a doubt. But it's also a cure, the words, they are also the cure for the heart. But it is from us that we try and understand that this is the kalam of Allah. With reverence and respect, I need to be there for the Tarawi prayer. And yes, that does mean that we need to have a schedule, a diary for the day. How am I going to be today? What am I going to do? That less sleep I might have had because of the suhoor or because of waking up. How am I going to compensate you for the, in the day? That is no problem. Our day, days have to be shuffled a bit. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa relates, Whosoever wants to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing any good deed, for such a person shall be the reward like the one who has performed a farad in any other time. Meaning, one optional deed is the reward of a farad. One optional deed is the reward of a farad. And one farad is the reward of 70 faraid. So this is why we say, this is the month where is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 70, the Mufassirun, the Muhaddithun rahimahullah ta'ala relate here, that 70 is an aspect of saying so much. You know, sometimes we say, if you do this, 
you'll get thousands of reward. Or if you do this, you get thousands of pounds. So it doesn't mean literally 1,000. It means even more. In the very same way, 70 meaning, Allah Azza wa Jalla gives you so many rewards. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relates, this is indeed the month of patience. We have to be patient in this month. We haven't ate, we haven't drank, so we are going to have certain aspects of mood waves. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then relates, and the reward for true patience is Jannah. That when you are patient, and remember, when we talk about patience, usually what happens is we think of only one thing. If I'm hungry, if I'm thirsty, I don't lash at anyone. If somebody says something to me, I don't say anything back. That is definitely patience, without a shadow of doubt. But there is also a greater patience than this. My brain and my heart says to commit this sin. And I show sabr ala ta'ah. That I am obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. I am patient. I know that I can do this sin. But I also know that Allah is watching. So I tell myself that I cannot do this. Just like I am fasting, I am not meant to be doing this sin also. And this is one of the key reasons why. Why has Allah Azza wa Jal made us fast? What is one of the key wisdoms behind fasting is that if I can forsake drinking, Eating for the sake of Allah, which is natural. We all drink, we all eat. It's in our DNA. It's part of being insan. If we can forsake these things, then we can forsake things that are much, much higher than this also. And then the Prophet ﷺ then relates, It is a month of showing kindness to everyone. It is a month in which a true believer's risk are increased. And we do see this. Allah, we are fasting, but our risk, our food, our sustenance... SubhanAllah becomes increased. And then the Prophet ﷺ relates, Whosoever feeds a fasting person in order to break the fast at iftar, for him there shall be forgiveness of sins and free them from the fire of Jahannam. And as we say here, you know, we have iftar here. And as Ashraf was saying a few weeks ago, we have this question that we are not poor, so why give iftar? We are not poor, so why give iftar? Number one, the hadith here doesn't relate that you have to give iftar to a poor person. You're giving iftar to a person that is fasting, regardless of his circumstances. And understand, especially for all of us that have come from a different part of the world, that what is worse than poverty? What is worse than poverty? Because what happens is, because we are conditioned to say to ourselves that poverty is the worst thing ever. Without a shadow of doubt. Poverty is harsh. Poverty is a bad thing. And we try to take people out of poverty. This is why we give zakah. This is one of the key reasons why we give zakah. But what is worse than poverty? Worse than poverty is having no iman. Because a person will have poverty in this world. When he dies, he will be in Jannah. For the infinite time. Imagine, a person has everything. But he has no iman. He dies, he is worse than that person that is poor. And this is why one of the key reasons is, is to create a Ramadan spirit. To create where we want to come to the masjid and we want to be part of the community of the masjid. The only sole purpose is so that our love with Allah, our taqwa increases. This is the key reason why. And yes, whoever feeds, they will get the reward also. And then the Prophet sallallahu relates that that person shall receive the same reward as the fasting person without the fasting person losing any reward. You fed a hundred people, you will get now your fast, the reward of your fast and the reward of a hundred people's fast without them losing any reward. Thereupon, the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala jma'een, Allah bless them, such a question they asked. They said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not all of us can afford to give a fasting person something to break the fast with. And we can't all afford it. Some of us can, some of us can't. So Messenger of Allah, we can't afford it. So what do we do? Then the Prophet ﷺ replied, Allah gives the same reward to the one who gives a fasting person to break the fast, a date or even a sip of water. The person next to you, you know, very easy, our teachers say to do this is so easy. 
You're sitting in the masjid. There's dates there. Get one date, give it to the person next to you. Tell him you break your fast with this date. And then you have a, somebody breaks the fast with water, especially in countries where its climate is very hot. Right? They break their fast with water. You get the water and you give it to the person next to you. And you will get the reward of his fasting also. Imagine if everybody had this awareness, we would do khair sabiqat and we would try to make the other person happy. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa relates, This is a month, the first of which brings Allah's mercy, the middle of which brings His forgiveness, and the last which brings the freedom from the fire of Jahannam. And then last but not least, and we finish off with this part, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa relates, Whosoever gives less work to his employee or workers, Allah will forgive him and forgive, forgive him and free him from the fire of Jahannam. You know, this is essential. If we are fasting and we have Muslim workers, then, you know, we live in an ajib society. So Allah make it easy for us. You know, corporates, big corporates and big businesses in today's day and age, they will ensure that the workers have the time for suhoor if they're working in the nights and have the time for iftar. Just a few days ago, I was, I was doing something for Morgan Stanley. And they had the same, so they had the same like a guidance for their top CEOs that how can we make Ramadan easy for our Muslim employees? They actually have this, they have a whole booklet for this. That how can we make Ramadan easy for our Muslim employees? And it's not just in England, the whole world. So they asked me to give some advice. So they have, you know, a whole booklet prepared. And many companies have this. We, they're not the only one. They understand that we have to make life easy for our employees. Let me ask us a question here. We as Muslim who are owning our own businesses, have we ever thought of making ease for our Muslim employees? They are not Muslims. These big businesses, corporates, most of them that we have dealt with, they're not Muslims. Some of them have no religion. But they have the audacity to understand that we need to make ease for our Muslim employees. And we as Muslims, we need to ask ourselves, where are we standing here? Is it just, yes, when they take time out. So for the employees, for example, one of the key things that they done was if the employee needs a 10 minute reflection, 10 minute break time, have a walk because they can't eat anything, then they can go and have their walk rather than have a coffee. That means that they will lose money, right? But they've done this for the betterment of their employees. And there's reasons for doing this. But we need to ask ourselves that, what is do we make for our employees? It's Ramadan. Just like we are fasting, they are also fasting. And this is why it's very, very important that if we have Muslim employees, then we make ease for them. We think, how can we make their Ramadan more easier? It's very important. And last but not least, as we said at the beginning, that fast in the month of Ramadan. I, this is inconceivable, inconceivable, 20 years before, that a person comes to Ramadan and doesn't fast. I can remember when we were a child that we would never see someone not fasting. We've come to a day and age where not fasting is fashionable. Subhanallah. Like how strange the mind can go to. That it's okay. It is not okay. This is a shi'ar of Islam. This is a farad of Islam. If you don't fast, what good deed can you do? If Ramadan comes and you cannot do good deeds, then how are you going to do good deeds out of Ramadan? That's number one. Number two, change your schedule. Yes, you will lose some sleep somewhere. Without a doubt. You know, in the night, there will be times where you get less sleep. In the day, you need to try to make up for the sleep. So what that means is, if you can, change your schedule a bit. That lunchtime, take your sleep if you have lunch break. After work, if you have ability, take an hour sleep. So that you are prepared for the Tarawih prayer. Why? We have no understanding. You know, go to the States. Go to other parts of Europe. Where they will not be able to finish the Quran in Ramadan. Because they don't have a fast. We don't have an understanding of this. Because we've not seen it. This is a, this is a mercy and a blessing of Allah. We are standing in the court of Allah for an hour and hour 15 minutes. Doing what? 
listening to the words of Allah. If this cannot create love, then what can create love? So, you know, be prepared and make time off for the Tarabi prayer. And last but not least, as we said, as by Ashraf was saying for the last few weeks, come for iftar. Bring your children for iftar. This is not about we don't have food at home, we, we have food at home. This is about making our young ones, and as I said before, what's worse than poverty is not having iman. I'm telling you, this is worse than poverty. So it is about making an environment so that our young ones know that this is the month of Ramadan. This is a month where we get closer to Allah. May Allah give us ability to understand ability to amal. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.